While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how to do conformational analysis of cyclohexane. And what I want you to get out of this is number one, that cyclohexane adopts a chair conformation to allow its bond angles to be 109.5. We're also going to learn that cyclohexane conformational stability is that chair structures are more stable than twist boat, which are more stable than boat, which are more stable than half chair. We're also going to see three, each carbon in chair cyclohexane has an equatorial and what's called an axial bond. We're also going to see number four here that for substituents to be cis to each other in chair cyclohexane, they must either both be up or down. And opposite here, for substituents to be trans to each other, one must be up and the other one must be down. This will all make sense very soon. And the fifth thing we'll see here is that axial substituents become equatorial when chair cyclohexane ring flips and vice versa, equatorial substituents become axial when chair cyclohexane ring flips. So let's understand these principles here. Here, remember, is just a simple two-dimensional picture of cyclohexane. He's a simple six-carbon ring, and this is one way to represent him. However, this is not the reality. Cyclohexane does not look like this structure. What he actually adopts is this structure right here most of the time. This is a certain conformation of cyclohexane, and they happen to call it chair cyclohexane. And take some time to make the connections here. These would be the six carbons for the structure on the left, and the six carbons would be right here in chair cyclohexane. The reason why cyclohexane likes to adopt this conformation is because it allows the bond angles in the molecule to adopt 109.5 degree angles. If you were to determine the hybridization of each one of the carbons in this ring, you would see that they're all sp3, which is why they want the 109.5 degree bond angles. So there's an incentive for cyclohexane to adopt this conformation. And not easy to see here, but take my word for it, you would measure the 109.5. We're going to see this is where making models in organic chemistry comes into play. And I highly recommend that you have a set and make these molecules and look at their three-dimensionality. It's going to help you understand this so much better. In fact, a major key point here is that what I'm about to show you is how to work two-dimensionally on a piece of paper to perform conformational analysis on cyclohexane, so that eventually you won't have to construct the three-dimensional models. Because here's the thing, on your orgo test, time is of the essence. You technically don't have the time and the luxury to create the model of a molecule in the middle of the exam. However, when you're at home, you want to do this analysis that I'm about to show you and make the model at the same time so you can build the three-dimensionality of your brain. However, just to try to get you to see this three-dimensionality, if this is your chair structure, imagine that it bends right here at these two points. This would be one leg of the chair and this would be another leg of the chair. And if you think about it, it does look like a chair if you look at this picture right here. Like I said, it's important that we really understand the three-dimensionality of this structure. Now, just to be sure, chair cyclohexane is not the only conformation here. I'd like you to know it's one. Here it is. Cyclohexane can also adopt a what's called twist boat conformation. It looks like this. It can also adopt a boat conformation, which kind of looks like a boat, and this one right here, which is called half chair. Make the connections. Notice all of these are really variations of the chair. And some vocab here. Let's make sure we know all of these are what's called conformational isomers. And I'd like you to know some principles here. The highest energy conformation would be half chair, and the lowest energy conformation would be chair. And twist boat and boat would be in between these two. 
This is our first principle in doing conformational analysis of cyclohexane, and that is knowing that chair cyclohexane is the lowest energy conformation. Now, let's talk about how to draw chair cyclohexane. Well, first, let's go back to the original cyclohexane here. What I want to note is that, remember, each carbon, being sp3 hybridized, would have two bonds within the ring and two bonds outside of the ring. And in this case, let's say we just have hydrogens connected to these carbons. When you represent this molecule as chair cyclohexane, you simply draw this template first. Always draw it in this direction and you'll be fine. Then we should think about how these bonds to the hydrogen are arranged in this molecule. And there's some vocab here too. Notice each carbon again has the two bonds outside of the ring. And I'd like you to know that one of the bonds in this case points directly straight up and it's called the axial bond and the other bond is kind of at a slant like this, and this one's slanting downward, he's called equatorial. Every carbon in the ring has these two types of bonds, and it's very important that we know how they're arranged. So for instance, in the lower left carbon on this ring, this would be his axial bond. All axial bonds are always gonna be vertical, straight up and down, when you generate chair cyclohexane in this fashion. So the axial on the next carbon would look like this. The other axial would be on this carbon in this arrangement. And let's pause for a second. Notice what's happening. These axial bonds are alternating up, down, up, down. So the rightmost carbon, we could say the axial group is pointing downward. That means the next one would be pointing upward. And the next one would be pointing downward. And we're back to the original one pointing upward. This is just to help you quickly draw this, knowing that they alternate. Because the same thing is true for the equatorial bonds. Look at our first one there. We can say it's slanting downward, and this one's slanting upward, and this one's slanting downward here. This one slants upward, this one slants downward, and this one back to slanting upward. It's very important that we memorize this template right here. This is the structure that we're going to start with when we do conformational analysis on chair cyclohexane. And again, take the time to make a model of this and look at all the axial and equatorial bonds. You'll see that all the equatorial bonds are pointing outward and create almost an equator around the molecule, hence their name equatorial. And you'll see the axial bonds are sticking straight up and straight down, kind of on an axis. So, let me show you how to use this to answer one of the types of problems you might encounter on an orgo test. This one says, draw a chair conformation of cis-1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane. Let me show you the steps here. First, draw your general template of a chair cyclohexane molecule like this. Then, place the substituents here. Notice we have a methyl on carbon 1 and carbon 3. And you could start anywhere. I suggest starting with this carbon at the left and put a methyl on him. And in this case, notice I'm placing him on the axial bond. And I'm going to call this carbon 1. Now, I didn't have to make him axial. I could have made him equatorial. You're going to see in a few minutes that it doesn't matter. So let's start off by just making him axial. Now, remember, we also have a methyl on carbon 3, so if this is carbon 1, let's call this carbon 2, therefore this would be carbon 3. Think about this, we need to place a methyl on that carbon, and that methyl has to be cis to the methyl on carbon 1. The question is, how do we do that? Well, remember, we know that every carbon in chair cyclohexane has its axial bond and it has its equatorial bond. We've memorized this. We know exactly that's what they look like on carbon 3. But now go back to the methyl on carbon 1. The fact that I happen to randomly put him in the axial position, he is technically pointing up, or we can say he was placed above the ring. So let's label him as an upward-facing bond. Now, go back to carbon 3 here. In this case, the axial bond, notice, is faced upward. And the equatorial bond happens to be in this location, the downward facing bond. And the way to orient these two methyls, cis, or remember, same side, is that they should both be pointing either up 
or they both point down. So if my axial methyl on carbon one is up, then this methyl should also be in the up position. And that happens to be, in this case, axial. So this happens to be our molecule. Notice we satisfy the cis in the name. These methyls are technically on the same side of the ring. So this is our answer. Now careful, cis doesn't mean same as in both are axial. We don't go by that to get to cis. We're always going to use either both up up or both down down to get cis. In fact, let me show you another way to answer this same question. Let's again, let's start from the beginning here. Draw again cis 13 dimethylcyclohexane. We'll draw out our general template here for cyclohexane. And let's place the methyl on one of the carbons. And in this time, I'm going to make him equatorial. Remember, I told you, you could have done this as well. Now, let's say that that happens to be carbon 1, so that would make carbon 3 over here. And remember, we've memorized that the bonds on carbon 3, his axial looks like this, his equatorial looks like this. Now, go back to the methyl on carbon 1. We made him equatorial, but he happens to be the bond that's pointing downward at that position. So let's label him the down bond. Now, go back to carbon 3. Remember, in this case, the axial is the upward-facing bond, and our equatorial happens to be the downward-facing bond. So, to generate the cis version of this molecule, if the methyl on carbon 1 is facing down, then the methyl on carbon 3 should also face down, which means that places him on an equatorial bond in this case. So this is another version of cis-1,3-dimethylcyclohexane. And notice again, the methyls are on the same side of the ring. They're both down or under the ring, we could say. So that means if you were asked to draw this molecule on an exam, there's technically two acceptable answers. We'll talk about the relationship between these two molecules a little bit later. However, this is such an important skill, let's practice another problem. For instance, this one now says, draw a chair conformation of cis-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. So let's use our previously learned skills here. Let's start out with our template of chair cyclohexane. And let's place a methyl on one of the carbons. Let's put him right here and whatever, I'm just going to make him axial. So there's carbon number one which means this right here could be our carbon number two. Now, remember this part we memorized. The bonds on carbon two would look like this. His equatorial would be this bond. His axial would be this bond right here. So to correctly place the methyl here, let's go back to the first carbon and note that he is in the up position. So in order to be cis, we want the methyl on carbon two to also be up. That, in this case, is the equatorial, and the down bond here in this position happens to be the axial. So in order to place this methyl cis, we would put it right here in the up position. Notice for this particular problem now, he happens to be in that equatorial position. So remember, cis means same side as an up, up, down, down, not same as an axial, axial, equatorial, equatorial. So this would be our answer. Now, what I recommend is try to draw this same structure, but make the first methyl equatorial and see what you get. If you'd like, you can pause the video and try it really quick, and then I'll show you the answer. It's very important that you think through this yourself. So, if you did it correctly, this is what you should get. In this case, we got this methyl, which is pointing downward and happens to be equatorial and this methyl also pointing downwards, but downwards happens to be axial at this location on the ring. So these are the two versions of cis-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. Now let's look at another example here. Now let's draw the chair conformation of trans-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. Again, we'll start with our general template right here. And let's put a methyl on one of the carbons, and I'm going to make it axial, making this carbon 1. Then I want to look at carbon 2 over here, 
and think about this, the first carbon has his methyl in the up position. So to be trans, trans is opposite. I want the methyl on carbon two to point in the downward direction. And remember, we've memorized that the downward bond on this location of the ring happens to be the axial bond. And the upward bond is the equatorial bond. So again, if my first methyl is up, I want my methyl on carbon two to be down. So I should place him right here. Which means in this case, look at our answer here. We have an axial methyl and another axial methyl. And again, if you decided to start with the first methyl being equatorial, then this is what you would get for your answer. Notice in this structure right here, the top left carbon has the methyl pointing downward, and carbon two here has the methyl pointing upward. If one methyl is going down and the other one's going up, they would be trans to each other. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is the relationship between these two molecules. It's also a very important staple skill. For instance, let's say this is your chair structure right here. And what I wanna show you in the upper right, let's pretend this is an exact side view of chair cyclohexane, meaning that this carbon right here is this carbon in the structure above. This is this carbon here. This is this carbon right here and this carbon right here. What we need to know is that chair cyclohexane has the ability to what's called ring flip. And here's how I want you to think about it. Look at the upper right hand structure. When you flip a chair, this is what happens. Think about it. The headrest drops down like this and the footrest of the chair goes up like this. So it's almost like their roles are reversed, meaning the headrest becomes the footrest and the footrest now becomes the headrest. What would that look like then? Now let's look at the structure on the left. If you ring flip this structure, he would now look like this. Notice he does technically match the structure in the upper right now. This is very important. Let's see an instant replay of this. Remember, this was the original side view here. And when you ring flip, this drops down. This comes up right here. And now our new chair cyclohexane looks like this. This is something else you're gonna to wanna to do with the models. Make a cyclohexane, ring flip it, and you will see it does mimic this process. So here's what I want you to know about this. Let's say this is our chair structure, and let's number the carbons right here, one through six. We know that this chair could ring flip, but I want you to know the consequence of a substituent on a cyclohexane when cyclohexane ring flips. Well, let me show you, remember, remember this is the result that we would get from the ring and make the connections here. This would be the new carbon one over here. This is the carbon member that has the methyl attached to it. What I want you to see here is that the methyl on that carbon one would now convert into the equatorial position. Make sure you see these connections. In fact, let me number the rest of the carbons here and make the connections of the structure on the left to the structure on the right. In fact, let me walk you through that here. Notice this carbon one, remember what happened is he was pushed downward here during the ring flip, which is why he's down here in the ring flip version. And carbon four right here after the flip went upward like this. So now that's why he's right here. And here's our important principle. We have to remember that when chair cyclohexane ring flips, all axial substituents convert to equatorial. And I'd like you to know the reverse is true. All equatorial substituents after a ring flip will convert to the axial position. And some vocab here, let's know that the relationship between these two ring flip versions, these are conformational isomers. We're gonna see that this explains why when we're drawing out the molecules, we can start off by making the first substituent either axial or equatorial because we know the molecule has the ability to ring flip so both orientations are feasible. That's why in the previous problems it didn't matter if we put the first substituent either axial equatorial. For instance, going back to our cis-1,3-dimethylcyclohexane that we did before. Here it is, notice they're both axial. That's one answer we got but we also said this was an acceptable answer as well. Both of them equatorial. 
Now what we're doing is we're noticing that these are technically just the ring flip versions of each other. Notice on the left both methyls that are axial flipped over to the equatorial positions. And this is very important to note here. In fact, I'd like you to know that a ring flip does not change the identity of the molecule. This is kind of like another way of saying that a conformational isomer may be a different conformation, but it's still the same molecule. As in both of these conformational isomers here in front of you are still cis-1,3-dimethylcyclohexane. Now, up to this point, we're not ready to do any kind of conformational analysis. This is just merely an introduction. But we're going to see doing conformational analysis involves you doing these steps first. We'll learn that in the next online lecture. So for now, let's look at our key points. Number one, we learned that cyclohexane adopts a chair conformation to allow its bond angles to be 109.5. We also saw, too, that cyclohexane conformational stability is always chair is the most stable, then it's twist boat, then it's boat, with half chair being the highest energy conformation, or less stable. We also saw three, that each carbon and chair cyclohexane has what's called an equatorial and an axial bond. And we saw four here, that for substituents to be cis to each other in chair cyclohexane, they must either both be upward or downward, and opposite here, for substituents to be trans to each other, one must be up and the other one down. And lastly here, number five, we saw that axial substituents become equatorial when chair cyclohexane ring flips, and vice versa, equatorial substituents become axial when chair cyclohexane ring flips.